Madhouse Podcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast, Scare Actor Appreciation Month, man. My favorite month to get to talk with new people, get to talk with returning people, but today we got a new one. Uh, first time ever going to the event this year for Six Flags Fright Fest. Uh, welcome with open arms and with a lot of laughs, and this this person is no stranger to some of those laughs, and that is Green Clown himself. How you doing, man? What's going on? Long time listener, first time caller. Uh, <laughs> man okay we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta go back a little bit man because listen what was what was the first thing you said to me what was the first thing i caught on camera of you saying and that's been a you're staple. not that guy pal you're that, not that, that guy pal. that's been you're a, not that guy that's been a staple between him and i ever since i went back to the event and every now every time he sees me he's got to say it or <laughs> you know uh and it's hilarious uh, it, i have footage of him I, I i accidentally and this is an accidental like thankfulness that i caught on camera but I have footage of of him saying uh, some fan trying to scare him, and he immediately just he just reversed it on them, and it was the funniest shit I ever caught on camera. Um, it's and- like you you have to turn it around on it because it's like to me I don't it it doesn't phase me anymore. So it's like for me to turn around and be like, "You're not that guy, pal. You're not that." Yeah. It's so funny that you caught that because like that was just my initial reaction was like right. You're not gonna scare me. Yeah, and I, I turned around to that TikTok and I was like, "You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy." <laughs> I mean, dude. I mean, it's just been so funny. I mean, I so I have never gotten the chance to to finally. I, I mean, this year was the first year I gotten to come out and see it, and I've heard so many things about Six Flags over the years. Uh, and when my friends went earlier in the season, I was out in Florida. I wanted to join them, but uh, they were telling me all about it and everything when I came back, and I was super excited to go finally. And I got to Six Flags, didn't know what to expect. My buddy was with me, uh, Rob, and he, he's he been going for years. He loves specifically your guys that scares him, but he loves the event as a whole. Um, and he just loves the aesthetics and, and how different it is compared to other haunts. And when we finally went, um, big shout out to uh, my good friend Trix. She's the one that was like, you got to come out and see me this season. I'm like, say less. Uh, I got you. I'm gonna come out and see you. And to my surprise, man, uh, Exile Brothers hit me up on Instagram, telling me come out, get some good footage. And then I met you. I met a lot of the other um, fucking talented monsters at that event from other scare zones, other mazes, and whatnot. And it was just a fucking fun time. I thought I was only gonna be going once this season. Turns out I ended up going three times this season. <laughs> and I live all the way out near Buena Park, so I mean, you know more than anyone. That's a drive. That is a drive. Yeah. I know. Dude, but that's so cool. Like, I, I love to hear, like, first timers come and then just immediately just, like, enjoy the event. And that, that you know, if we can have you come for more than once, like, that's that's an uh, accomplishment in itself. You know, like, I'm like, oh, we, we're actually doing something for people to come back, you know? like Oh, dude. I mean, where do you even begin with this podcast <laughs> with this guy right here? I mean... I mean First off, I gotta I gotta start from the before we get to the funny business because there's gonna be a lot of it. Uh, you know, I already know it. There's a lot of stories we could talk about, a lot of stuff that I witnessed the days I went and stuff, and so much fun. But let's start from the beginning with you, man. Uh, when did you know you wanted to scare act, man? When did you know you wanted to be a monster? When did you know you want to terrify people out there? Oh man, okay. Um, my story begins. Uh, I remember seeing my dad like out in front of our like porch uh, at our house and he was just pretending like he was a dummy. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. Like I saw him scaring people and I was like, that's that's what I want to do. So the next year, me and my dad did it together. And like I just fell in love with it. So I started building stuff in front of my house. Like I, I 
asked my parents for some money. I, you know, I was mowing lawns, washing cars, like just to build whatever I could, like use lights from the 99 cent store, freaking uh, the spider uh, webbing and like just anything I could use, like to make like a little home hot, you know, right, I like right. black lights, strobe lights. I had, I had everything. And, you know, that's what I was like, oh man, this is cool. Like I, I enjoyed this. And then, um, you know, in middle school, there was like a, a home haunt that was put on by the activity, uh, police activity league. So it was in my, my hometown Oxnard. And, um, you know, like they had like an abandoned building and they like put on a pretty cool event, you know, for, like for the kids, you know, just to stay out of trouble and stuff. Right. And I was like, I want to do this for real. Like, I want to go to like Horror Nights. I want to go to like Knott's. Um, how my very first year at Fright Fest, it was in 2011. And I originally wanted to, to go to HHN to, to scare there. Right. And I saw that the audition dates were two weeks prior. So I missed it. Then I looked up Fright Fest because I had been there once before. And it was the next day. So I was like, oh, hell yeah, let's go. I was like, hey, I asked my dad for a ride. I was like, hey, dad, like, can you take me to Six Flags? And he was like, oh, hell no. And I was like, no, 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 but it's for a job. And he's like, oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so he ended up taking me and I went to the audition and I got I got a part in one of the mazes and I loved it ever since. Oh, man. Like like a lot of uh, newbies out there, you did start in a maze, man. And how long did you do mazes for before you got on on streets? Uh, I did it for one season, one year. Oh wow! And then um, they actually had me do. Um, I was a slider in the maze, like towards the end of the maze. Okay. Um. So I, I that's when I became like I was like, oh man, this is what I want to do on the streets. Like right. I want to know how to do this. And then when I came back in 2012, I was up on exile exile hill and um i'm sorry for your uh for having to hike up there every day too man i can only do it like the first <laughs> time i ever went and i felt so bad for all the amazing monsters up there but like i was just like i is there an escalator is there an elevator I can it's go a mission like so it depends on how you get up there because like you can take the train up there the little tram that takes you up yeah or yeah. you just have to climb the stairs and that's just a mission i remember back in the day they used to shuttle us to like the back of the park and then you had to climb up oh, but now, and then and then they had the the opening ceremony where we would walk to the front of the park and then take the tram up and it was just like easier that way so i was like i was always lazy and i was oh <laughs> <laughs> <Hell, yeah. laughs> yeah oh man um, exile is good that's a good scare zone though man exile well that's that's my that was like og like that's where i fell in love with sliding that's where like the character I am today is because of Exile Hill. Really? Okay. Yeah. I dig it. I'm feeling it. I mean, and I love the character, so. <laughs> so how was your time on Exile, man? I mean, how long were you on Exile Hill for? Exile Hill. So I went, I've been back and forth. Uh, so 2012 was my first year on Exile Hill. I was a Green Goblin. Okay. And then um, I was just doing my thing up there. I ended up going to school 2013 through 2016, right? Uh, 15, 2013 to 2015. And then I came back. Um, and then I made a return. I went to demon's door for 16 and 17. Okay. And then 2018, I made re my return back on exile. So exile it was, it was kind of like a whole loop around. So it was kind of neat to go back to my roots, you know, like I, I, I will, I love that hill. I love Exile Hill so right. much. Like, that's one of the OG scare zones. So, like, it's almost like an honor. Like, that and CD Under Siege. Like, those two scare zones have been there the longest. You know, kind of like Ghost Town or, like... Carnival and everything, yeah. Carnival, yeah. Those those are OGs at Knott's. But, like, ours are definitely, like, City and um, Exile. Like, those, yeah. those have been the longest um, scare zones that have been at the event. So... Um, getting to do those is, is just an honor too, you know, like I, yeah. guys that I used to look up to going to the event, um, I got to like slide with them. So it was kind of neat to like pick their brains and how to do, how to do all that. Like, 
sliding and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds to me like I, I've heard a lot of stories from Six Flags about Exile Helen and stuff, and I was starting to now put the pieces together that that's like pretty much Six Flags is ghost town right there. That's where a lot of people go and, and you know, make names for themselves and whatnot. Same thing with City Under Siege comparing it to Carnival. I mean, it's an obvious comparison, obviously, because of the, you know, the, <laughs> the whole clown aspect, but it is the zone where you have, like, a lot of fun in, and, you know, you, you'll get some laughs and, and whatnot there. Same thing like Carnival. You get a lot of laughs and everything when you go there, and everybody's talking to people and whatnot. So, yeah, no, I, mean, I, I dig that. So, 2019, did you take a year off, or did you go to another zone? Or were you still in exile? What was going on with that? So, 2018 um, was my last year on exile, and then they, like, they kind of made it like a surprise because like I had been, you know, I, I know the directors and stuff pretty well that they kind of like gave me a surprise. They're like, oh, like we need to talk to you. And I was like, oh, man, what, what do I do now? Like, what, <laughs> what, what, what kind of trouble did I get into this time? And they're like, um, so unfortunately, you're not going to be on Exile Hill. And I was like, oh, damn, where, where am I going? Where am I going? And they're like, uh, congratulations, you're going to City Under Siege. I'm like, oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> city under siege man so 2019 you get you get into city under siege man uh were you always have you always started as green clown um so green clown well yeah 2019 i i here's the thing so the exile bros um i like 2019 we were we're we're still stacked in right. that in that scare zone like 2019 once i got there like i felt like we were the top scare zone like getting to scare with my bros you know like right i had i had them i had tweak the clown uh jinx was there uh then tricks followed followed with me because we were both on exile and then we went to in 2018 we were on exile and then we both made the transition to clowns in 2019 right so we were we were so stacked in that scare zone like that was uh, I wanted green. I wanted to fit in. I uh, whatever I needed to do, I was gonna go all out, you know. And thus, the green clown was born. The green clown was born. Yes. <laughs> oh man! I mean, you, you hear a story like that, and you see this guy in person. It is just the best thing ever, man. I mean, it is. I, I I tell you this, man. I've had. I've never laughed and had so much fun at a haunt <laughs> that I did at freaking fright fest. And it honestly, like, you know, before. People would always ask me, like, oh, would you ever work a season? Would you ever do that? And, you know, I, you know, the, the one answer I'd always would say would not was not, you know, and I was like, I'd, I'd probably do not, you know. I made a for sure decision that I would be like, I would love to come scare here for one night or for a whole season if I could um, just to scare with you guys, man, because, I mean, Hell yeah. your comedy <laughs> and then I throw in a little bit of my stuff and it's like, oh, man, uh, we're, we're going to probably be on the verge of getting fired. <laughs> oh, dude, that, that's that's my biggest fear every night. It's like every time, like I'm just looking at the director, like, is he gonna say something to me today? I'm oh, I think we're fired. good. Nope, we're, we're good. good. <laughs> All right, let's keep doing that. Let's All not right, push opening the boundaries. ceremony. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like man. I try to avoid them at all costs, and it's like, okay, made it to seven o'clock. We're good. Let's we're go. Good. Yeah, scared. <laughs> uh, so 2019, you get on uh, City Under Siege. You got to. Uh, bring out the green clown for the first time ever. And how was that, man? Was that just a, a blast for you or how? Oh, like, okay. Like, like I said, I just wanted to fit in. Yeah. So I had tweak there, tweak the clown. Um, He's the yellow one. Right. I had the exile bros, pink and blue. And, you know, I, I wanted to fit in. They were going to give me like costuming. Um, They let you kind of be creative too. Sometimes they'll, they'll, if you have the idea to present a costume, you can go ahead and see if it gets approved. Right. My my whole green costume, like I made from scratch. And really? So I, everything that you wear to this day, it's all made by you. Everything that I wore was made by me. That's awesome. And I I was just I wanted to like I didn't want to take their look, but I wanted to you know somewhat fit in. So fit in it, them, it right. looked like I was meant to be part of that scare zone you know oh man and i and i 100 percent agree man because i i uh i walked in watching you work and watch you do your thing man is the fucking funniest thing i've ever seen <laughs> ever at a haunt dude like i've never i don't think me and my buddy have ever laughed so hard at a haunt just watching you guys all night because like with with clowns like we we can we're we're scary looking but you know like if we can't get a scare 
if you're gonna you know like you're not gonna flinch you're not gonna jump then we're gonna throw in some comedy. at least we're gonna entertain you that's the thing yeah and that's what i like i hope that i can leave that guest with like okay you didn't scare me but that dude was pretty funny that's what i've always said man if you can't scare me make me laugh you can't make me laugh fucking interact with me because yeah. either one you're gonna walk off leaving, leaving some sort of uh first impression or something with that person and they may remember that for a long time to go and keep coming back and remember that moment and try to make new I ones still, with you. I have people coming back to this day. Like I remember I'll, I'll, if they don't get scared, I'll try to like roast them. And then they're like, Hey, do you remember this guy? Like you, you, you said you weren't going to forget. I'm like, Marshall, I didn't forget you, bro. I didn't forget you. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I roasted the hell out of this guy. It was so funny. I don't, oh man. Like I just made him feel so like he had nothing to say. It was like a KO. And like from to this day, like he comes back. He's like, I'm like, Marshall, I never forgot about you. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I've talked to Tricks a couple of times uh, after season. We've hung out in person a few times and we've played some video games a few times and whatnot. And we were playing Dead by Daylight the other day. Just, you know, just bullshit and hanging out. And out of nowhere, like, um, one of the killers was actually a clown. And <laughs> fucking out of nowhere, she's like, oh, it's the clown. And then out of nowhere, my instinct, first thing I thought of, and she immediately caught on to it. And I was like, yeah, great clown. And then she just started yeah. yelling it too, dude. I was like, you can't forget that, dude. He he makes it public. He makes it and he announces it to the world. Even during the Slider show, when it's not even about him, he makes it about him. And I love that, dude. That's hilarious. It's, it, it's, it's, yeah. Throughout the years, like I've made it to be my my own biggest fan. Like I'm my own biggest fan. Like right. that's I I think that's the funniest thing to me because like it's so obnoxious. Yeah, but it it sticks. Every catchphrase that I've I, I I kid you not. Throughout the years, I always have at least one catchphrase. This year was Yeah Green Clown. I'm like, where's that shirt at? How come we don't have a Yeah Green Clown shirt yet? <laughs> yeah. like, that face on it. <laughs> I mean, look at that, dude. That's a yeah, green clown shirt right there, man. I mean, we gotta get that going this next year, man. I mean, we gotta we gotta sell those to people, man. We gotta <laughs> we gotta represent for next season. I need I need to talk to marketing. I need to talk, talk to, to marketing. Uh, merchandise. Uh, pink blue. Where you at? We need we need to get something going. <laughs> uh, well, what was their catchphrase? Uh blue. I could tell you, it's uh my ex wife. My ex wife. Yeah, <laughs> and and pink. Uh, after penalty flags, I mean, I don't know. I think I, I would say his was just a picture with him with the whistle and just yelling penalty. <laughs> oh, dog. We're gonna we're gonna talk about penalty flags later oh, on. Dude. That was some fun too, <laughs> man. I mean, it's it's great to hear that. I mean, okay, so twenty twenty happens, we're shut down. We're done. Yeah. I mean, for the season. Uh, what did you do during twenty twenty? Did you take the time off to just kind of you know enjoy and relax a little bit? Did you? I know you missed it, but. Did you take the time off or did you find ways to stay active in the haunt community? Did you do anything else or did you just, I'm just going to take yeah. it. Yeah. Well, initially we thought it was going to happen. We right. thought we were the only park that was going to happen because we hadn't gotten an announcement yet. I know all these other parks had announcements, you know, like with whole, like the whole 2020 thing, it, everybody didn't know what was going on. Right. So we actually started um, talking about a show like, because 2019 was an awesome slider show. We me and the brothers and everybody that was involved with it, like, you know, but we put our minds together and we put on an awesome, awesome show and people, people really loved it. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bring that back, but even better. So mm -hmm. we had all of quarantine, obviously, because like everything was shut down. What else were you going to do? Right. And we just started working on it. We started working on it. Me and the brothers, put a soundtrack together we put choreography together and then come to find out like it just was not gonna happen so yeah i mean that was just in our back pocket um i ended up uh you know doing those car wash i would go to the car wash event or that uh tun tunnel of terror right. went to that um went to the stranger things drive through so you kind of just took the time that season to really check other things out because you don't yeah really i do wanted to i much. yeah you don't really get a chance to do that because you're so busy during the season so right. um that was nice to like check out um i ended up do i also ended up starting a podcast just to, just to get like we i love talking about you know everything and anything haunt related and right. i love talking like 
for example, like me and the brothers, we'll, we'll back in the day, we used to stay in the parking lot for hours, even after our shift, like three, four o'clock in the morning. It was like, bro, oh, like, like come back and do this. Right. Everything okay? What happened? Uh, yeah, the, my mic it said something. Can you hear me? Yeah, I did hear something real quick. It kind of went, you were like talking all of a sudden. It went, bro, and I was like, what the hell? Oh, oh. It oh, might have just good? been uh, loose USB. You're good. It's good now. Okay. okay. All right. My bad. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. It's chilling. <laughs> but yeah, um, what was I saying? Uh, oh, you just talk for hours about Haunt. <laughs> oh yeah, we just talk about hours for Haunt, and just like my, we're like, might as well just make it into a podcast because like that's that's what we enjoy doing. I had the brothers on it, and it's just us. Our chemistry is like no other. Like. I get their jokes and they get my jokes and we just feed off of each other. And I've never had like a partnership with those guys, like with anybody, but those guys, like those guys, they just get it. They, right. we get it. Right. No, I, I see the chemistry, man. Uh, I'm just saying, you never need to guess. You let me know. <laughs> uh, we, like We don't, we don't need to like, Hey, we, we don't even talk about some of the stuff that happens. It's just like, I, I know my place, and as if they're doing it, I'm doing it with them, you know? Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree, man. I mean, I, I got to see a lot of your guys' chemistry out there, whether you guys were all together or you guys were, you know, running solo and not, whatnot. But then the times you guys did come together, I knew something funny was going to happen. I mean, I knew <laughs> something. I mean, I, I remember catching one night, I have it on camera, of, of you guys taking, you know, you challenging this kid to a freaking tip-off and, <laughs> and freaking just – schooling you and you and you and blue just schooling him man and it was hilarious um so seeing stuff like that is hilarious um uh, when they're doing one thing and you come up and do another thing another moment that i i caught on camera amazing is when uh someone asked you for a picture and you ended up taking the picture of them with you not even in it <laughs> so they're like yo can i get a picture yeah here you hold on let me take that there like, you go dude, smile <laughs> I was dying so hard when I saw him. Like, did he really just do that? That really just happened? Like, that is the saying, thing my ever. character is such an asshole. Like, honestly, like, it's just, it's, it's a funny asshole though. Like, you can't get mad at a green clown. You literally cannot. Yeah. Like, you're asking for it. Exactly. <laughs> no. This is why you're all the beastie clowns. Come on. <laughs> the beastie clowns. That's hilarious, right there, man. Uh. So yeah, you took the time off. You got a little. Uh, you got to check out other things, experience other things. Um, then twenty twenty one comes around, man, and we're back in full gear. Where uh, parks are open, haunts are happening, everything is happening, just back to normal. How, how does that feel coming back, man? Coming back, I, honestly, like that break. It, I never thought I needed that, but it made me appreciate doing what we do so much more. Like right. I was full force i was like let's go i wanted to be the best year coming back that we could put on like we, i wanted to put on a show yeah I and mean, i think i think you guys did <laughs> i honestly think this 2021 was my favorite year that i've ever done haunt like i'm it certainly I'll, was my I'll, favorite year of haunt i'll tell you that I'll, right now i'll definitely say that Dude. and it's it like i I don't think I'll ever forget this year for sure. Like hands down, like my favorite year I, I'll put, I'll 2017 was pretty good year, but 2021 I'll all best year that I've best had. Year, hands down, huh? Hands down. I mean, 2021, man, great year for us as well. I mean, we got to experience a lot of new things. Fright Fest being one of those things. And I remember just walking in and being told by a couple friends that I knew, you know, ahead of time, like, oh, you want to stand here to get the best view of the opening ceremony and whatnot. And you want to, you want, you know, this is where I'll be. This is where they'll be and stuff. And to walk around and, and just kind of see everything go through the mazes and stuff. It was just so much fun to get something new. And for me, at least, and I enjoyed the hell. It was so bad, though, that every time I went, like, I, I had to make rounds to go see everyone and, and get, get footage of different scare zones, but I did not want to leave City Under Siege. I didn't. <laughs> like, I, I was afraid that I, if I left, I was going to miss something hilarious. It was it, <laughs> it was just like me with Ghost Town in 2019. I was afraid if I had left something, I was going to miss a moment of something. Uh, so, like, it was hard for me to even, like, want to leave that zone. I was like, I really want to go see everyone else, but at the same time, these guys are going to do probably something hilarious after I leave, <laughs> and I'm going to miss it. 
it's so funny too because like and and not because that there's any camera or because we know people i i kid you not that's from when we first start scaring at seven o'clock to the end of the night that's what you're gonna get we yep. we're not doing it for we're not doing it for the cameras we're not doing it for like we're just doing it just because we do it like that you're gonna get 110 percent out of all of us yeah that whole night and i mean and, it's hilarious because even if there is cameras it's even better because we get to catch all the moments to look back at <laughs> And it's so it's like that, like regardless of like who's there, who's watching, obviously we're not going to do anything too crazy when there's like, you know, the higher ups, but like right. we're, we're going to give you what, what we put out every time. Like it's we're, we're a good product. <laughs> oh, it's it's hilarious, bro. You got to talk to me a little bit about this gun that you had this season, man, because this gun <laughs> is one of the most simplest but most genius ideas to scare with, man. It's it's fucking loud. You can hear it from across the damn park. <laughs> it is the greatest thing ever. How did you come up with the idea with this gun, man? The Boohoozooka. So, um, 2019, um, I we would carry out the props for the slider show. Right. And one of them was the limbo bar, and it looked like a bazooka. So I'd go around to, like, people before the show and, like, put it in their face, <laughs> pretend like I was going to shoot something, but it was nothing because it, it was just PVC pipe that was holding the limbo bar that was right. it but it looked so like huge that it looked like a bazooka right and i was i was like scaring with it and like people were like flinching i'm like ah just kidding and somebody drew a cool picture of me holding a, a bazooka nice. but they nice. they wrote on the on the bazooka it said boohoozooka and i was like that's freaking clever tony the next i was thinking 2020 i'm gonna make a bazooka and it's gonna be like a horn <laughs> And like that's what I wanted. I wanted to like use it. Right. And um, twenty obviously twenty twenty didn't happen. Twenty twenty one came. Uh, I ended up uh getting uh a horn. Uh, had I had one of my buddies build it for me. Right. And it's just a simple like drill with a car horn on top of it. Right. And Matt, one of the exile bros, Pink, he actually put on PVC pipe for it. And this thing looked like gnarly this thing looked like it was gonna do like damage to somebody and i was like oh man i don't know if this is gonna get approved i got that was the version that was the first version that we came up with so i was like how am i gonna get this through security what are they gonna say <laughs> <laughs> security looked at it and goes what does that do i was like oh it's just a car horn okay i was like oh hell yeah that. Let's got go. it in i was like let's go it's just a car horn. That's hilarious. And they're like, okay. All right. Moving on. <laughs> I go up to my, my, uh, the director, Mark Wing, and I go, hey, so this is a, a prop. Can I, approved. It's approved. It's approved. He didn't even give me a chance to explain what it is. He's like, it's approved. It's approved. I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> and then you get out there and he looks at it and he goes, oh, shit. Shit, what did I? He's do? like, oh, that's that's actually gonna be too loud. Um, can you put tape over it? So I ended, I did put tape over it because right. it was a, a little too loud. That's because nobody was in the park. This was like during dress rehearsal, right? And he's like, this is way too loud. And then I started using it, and I was like, I can't hear this thing. Like, I'm gonna take the tape off. So I took the tape off. And I started scaring people, and that I just didn't put the tape back on. I just I couldn't. Well, you know, it, it's, just, it is different, though, when you're in a quiet environment compared to, like, when you have thousands of guests walking around and you got the music going, you got the, you know, you hear the, the roller coasters running, you hear, you know, people talking, laughing, screaming and whatnot. So it makes a huge difference when that noise comes into effect because then that noise kind of balances it in a way. Right. So I kid you not, two, three weekends in, I want to say it's like second weekend in. Second weekend in, I ended up breaking the Gen One oh, gun. Man. Mark One, <laughs> such done. a heartbreaker! Uh, such a heartbreaker! I was like, "Damn okay, it!" But do you still have any pieces left of Mark One? <laughs> that's all that's left in it. All that's, that's left one. right here, the Mark One. <laughs> there it is. I burnt out the horns. Apparently, I don't know how this. I don't know how that works, but like. Oh, the man. inside burnt out, but this is this is what's left. That's what's left of my. That's gonna be it's, forever. That's probably one day gonna be put in a museum. I was gonna put like a chain or something. Yeah, like, I don't dude, know. like go full <laughs> Tony Stark with it. There you go. Yeah. So Gen One broke, and I was like, "Damn it! What am I gonna do?" So 
so third weekend comes around. I didn't have a horn. And then I had my buddy again. I was like, look, I need something louder, something that's not going to break. And he's like, I got you. He brings me this big old, like the biggest PVC pipe that I could, that you could carry. And then he puts a train horn on this thing. Oh, I was shit. like, let's go. <laughs> I made sure I made sure not to sh- shoot this thing backstage. I didn't, I didn't want anybody to hear this until we got out because like <laughs> I knew it was I was just every afraid temptation like, shooting it backstage. You're like I want to, I want to, <laughs> but I just made sure just so I didn't get in trouble or like hey that's not gonna get approved because it's too loud. But I was like okay like okay don't shoot it until I get out there. <laughs> sure enough, I was out there. Bah, bah, and they're like. Did he get louder? No, no. It's just, it's the wiring. It's, it sounds cleaner now. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, no, it's, I, I, it's a better battery. It's a better <laughs> battery that I connected and it sounds a lot better. That's hilarious, man. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, this is how it's supposed to work. But like, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry. I got you. It's all right. <laughs> don't forget scares. <laughs> Literally. And that's, that's what it was like on it. It's so funny because they're like, oh, and I would just so it had lights um, in the tube. Right. And, um, you know, far away, people would see me holding this thing and I would just push it just just enough to where the lights would turn on. They're like, oh, it's just it's just a little light gun. Right. And then as soon as they got closer, I would just be like, <laughs> and they're like whoa. That's hilarious. They didn't, like, they didn't expect it. And I was like, just holding it like nonchalant, you know? Yeah. I got this. <laughs> it was funny because I got I got another. I, I'm telling you, when I got a lot of footage of these guys, I got a lot of footage of these guys. I really do. Um, <laughs> I got another a clip of you. Uh, it was when you were trying to go for the little girl's birthday hat. <laughs> and uh, you were like constantly trying to grab it and freaking kept beeping at her. She kept getting terrified. And then you'd go in to grab it. She'd get back up and you'd beep. Get back, you know, it was like a constant kind of back and forth with you two, and I thought it was hilarious, man. Was she so didn't want to give me that party hat. I hey, I wanted to party too. Just wanted to party. That's all you want to do, man. <laughs> you know, I I know a couple possums down in Ghost Town that would love to party with you, honestly. If you're if you're, oh. if you're, if you're for it, man, I trust me. I'm, I, I'm down. I'm about it. I know you're about the party. They're about the party. Let's <laughs> let's bring the party together. Let's have a massive like Project X style party, and then boom, <laughs> it's going down, bro. Oh man, uh, twenty twenty one. It's it's a good. This was a good season, man. I got to see you guys out there I, for the first time ever in a long time. I finally got to see a slider show. I hadn't seen a slider show since I went to Knotts back in two thousand eight. Um, oh, damn. and it's been so long. And you guys and Dark Harbor, if Dark Harbor was still around, I'm praying to God it does come back one day. But you guys and Dark Harbor were the only two haunts that I knew of, know of that did slider shows and kind of kept that momentum of that going to highlight some of the talent and skills of of all you guys really and to see a slider show again to see it so well choreographed the music was so on spot with what you guys were doing uh that was great was this the slider show now you guys mentioned talking about 2020 doing one did you guys kind of shelve this until 2021 came around and then kind of just you know brought it out and started rehearsing it and then remembering it again um, a little bit. Okay. So 2019 was the skeleton. Like we had, we got the crowd's reactions. We listened to what people wanted. We listened to what people liked, what, what we listened to, what music was appreciated. We listened to everything. Right. And we even looked up YouTube videos and saw what tricks got the most reactions. Right. And we're like, okay, cool. So we had the skeleton of what we wanted. And we just started put piecing things together. Like, we're going to put this here. This song goes good with this. Like, for example, Centipede, it, it, it was, ju- it just, it made sense to make a human tunnel. Right. And then, you know, we shot the legs and the choreography, like that, that just came, you know, after. Right. So everything, like, it, it just, it, essentially, yes, we did have, you know, that in our back pocket from, excuse me from 2020 right and then we just made it come to life 2021 that's cool i mean it's always it's always uh genius to that work right there man i really like that kind of mentality of where you guys uh, even like you guys will go back and re-listen and re-watch things like oh this got a good hype let's let's bring this back and see what we can up it more 
or something, you know, and it's one of those things where you can, yeah, you listen to the, the music of what's pop, what's, what's, what's not so hip and everything. And you kind of bring it all together and, and create something that's fucking an experience that people remember forever. Um, like I said, this was the first year we ever got to see something like this again since, at least for me, 2008. And I just fucking was blown away. I, I really was. Every night that I went, every night that I saw it, even though I've already seen it, I already knew what was going to happen. It still was like watching it for the first time. And it just <laughs> left me like, oh, my God, like, this is good. Like, I can't wait to see this, what they come up with next year. I can't wait to see how this keeps going and stuff. So if you're looking at a fan's point of view, at least looking at for next year, man, I mean... Just, just always, just fucking keep the energy flowing. That's all. I, that's all I care about is like the energy that's, was there. Exactly, and then too, like we, like we listen to our bodies too. Like that, uh, uh, scaring all night to doing a show at the end of the night. Like that's right. that's rough. That mm-hmm. is so rough. Like I wish they would have put the show earlier. You Maybe know, like the middle of the night where it's like in middle. Yes. Yeah. There's like an, that, there's enough of an audience. It's like, it's, it's a peak time. You guys are still like in the middle. So you guys are way more fresh than you are at the end. So, and that's, that's rough on our bodies. Like we listen, like nobody noticed this, but 2019, we did a lot more slides, but we try to make less slides this year. Like right. it was a slider show, but to us, like we limited what slides we were going to do. Like we didn't right. want to do like this full on, like we're just going to slide, 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 slide. Like we wanted to take our breaks while we were doing this show. Right. And like everybody t- like took advantage of that. And that helped so much throughout the season. Like we took, we, we tried to take care of our bodies the m- most we could. And I, and I did notice that too, a little bit. I mean, there were, there'd be times where you saw individual, people going out and do stunts and then there'd be times where all of you guys went out and did some stuff and then only like half of you guys would do it and then the other half would do it you know there, so there was that in there was that back and forth of people taking breaks and then people going out and showcasing and then vice versa them taking breaks and then you guys going out to showcase and whatnot so yeah there was that it, it wasn't like to the point where like it was noticeable to the fact where it was bad it was noticeable to the fact where like okay you saw what these guys just did now let's see what these guys can do like it's a back and forth kind of game where you're just like oh I, I'm, I'm serious i'm curious i saw what these guys did these guys did these guys did these guys fucking killed it let me see what these guys are gonna do now you know what i mean so just get you excited to see everyone and also not only that it gives everyone an opportunity to be the star of the show for a little bit you know what i mean yeah like, and that's and that's a, a good point that you put that because that, that's exactly what it was like we want everybody to have their show time like this is your we we had everybody's input we're like what are you comfortable doing? What is going to be your show moment? Right. Like this is what every person had a show moment. Right. And, and we made sure that was like highlighted. We made sure that was in the spotlight. That, I mean, I, I loved everything you guys do with that show. Uh, coming back, going into next year already. I, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I, I, I think it's cool that they let you guys choreograph all that. And you guys have a lot of freedom to do what you guys want. And, and, and most importantly, the comfort level of, having everyone, you know, making sure they're okay doing certain things and, you know, communicating. Communication is a huge thing in this industry. And, you know, to communicate with people and everything, that's a lot of fun to to see like, okay, you you can do this really well. If you're comfortable doing this, are you down to do this? And, you know, you're comfortable doing that if you want to be, you know. So it's cool to see, like I said, everyone gets their own little spotlight and that's really cool to see that. Everyone gets to have a lot of fun. That's the biggest biggest part of this, this, this show is to interact with the audience, to interact with, uh, you know, each other. And it's just cool to see everyone just have a fun time. I mean, you don't get to see that very often in the outside world. And it, Haunt, I've always looked at as a, a way to leave all your problems, all your bullshit outside the gate and just come in and have a fun time and just forget about it for a couple hours. And then when you leave, then you pick them back up and then we go from there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Man. Good point. Good point right there. Yeah. I, I, I love Haunt, dude. Haunt's like my my happy, my peace, my, my, zen, my zen space, man. And I just love... Two two months out of the year, like you know, all that stuff builds yeah. up, and then you get the September, October, and you you let loose. Yep, I just I just have a fun time. I can talk <laughs> with my friends and watch all my friends scare, and I get to make new friends that I've never met, or I I think is someone that's a rookie that's coming on for the first time, and I get to see what they get to showcase and everything. It's a lot of fun seeing all that, you know. It's just especially if you're a diehard fan of this 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 world, it just it's a go visit. Especially you guys. I mean, there was a night you guys all came to Knots. You know what I mean? And you guys got to visit all the Knots people. And there was times, there was nights where a lot of 
Like a lot of the Queen Mary Slider team went to go visit you guys for a night. You know what I mean? I like hearing stories when a different groups and, and stuff of, of different parks come and support each other. That's what it's all about in the end of the day. It's so nice. Like, honestly, like it, it was weird for the longest time. Like there was like a stigma like that was our hunts better than your hunt, our hunt. But I think 2017 is when like everything kind of came together. Cause I don't know if you know this, but me and the brothers and Timothy biscuits, right. We went to um, the queen Mary for the sliders unite show. Right. So we like, I got to meet so many people, so many people from knots. I met so many people from queen Mary, HHN, uh, the decade brigade. And those guys, like I, I still talk to those guys to this day. Like those guys are so cool. Like I, I loved meeting them. I met death. I met, uh, who else I meet? I met like the OGs. I met slider one, right. uh, what's his name? Todd Zeller at the, or Todd. I can't remember his last name, Todd, but the OG sliders, I was like, yo, like, this is crazy. Like I'm talking to the guy that invented it all. Like, yeah. And that, that spawns, if you think about it, man, I bring this up all the time, you know, it spawned, if it weren't for Knots, I don't think we'd have haunts at this level today. You know what I mean? Knots is the one that really set the, set the path and paved the way for all these haunts to open up and, and start doing different styles and whatnot and, and sliding and whatnot. It's, what, it's, what, it's where it all started. I mean, I was just exactly. talking to a friend the other day. She got a message from a guy that lives out in the Netherlands, and he said, yeah, I'm, like, the first person to start sliding out here, and it's because I watched a lot of videos on Ghost Town. Like, Hell, yeah. That's all the way on the other side of the goddamn world, <laughs> dude, in the Netherlands, and he's watching videos from freaking Buena Park, California's Ghost Town. You know what I mean? Like, that is nuts that they, like, they're, they're doing it in Japan now. They're doing it in yeah. Germany. Like, they're doing it all over the country now. Like, sliding, this is why I always say I love living in SoCal, because SoCal had some of the greatest bands come out of here. SoCal had some of the greatest movies come out of here. And then there's sliding and haunts. I mean, SoCal owns the haunt scene. This is where it was birthed. This is where it was formed. This is where sliding started. And now look at it now. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It's, oh man, like we're the sliding are, is like the rock stars of the haunt community. Like yeah. they're fucking like awesome. They like, are the Led Zeppelins of fucking <laughs> of the haunt community. Like, <laughs> As far as when you go back to, like, thinking about, like, when sliding started and whatnot, that is, like, you think of it, it's, like, SoCal is, like, the Led Zeppelin state of fucking sliding because this is where it originated <laughs> from. You know what I mean? And I'm a huge fan of it. Um, I love watching it. Would I ever do it? I the Part of me wants to. Part of me doesn't. But I, I feel like with my my version of scaring, I can, I can get away without it because I'm just so mm. goddamn tall. <laughs> Yeah, that that gun came in handy too. Oh yeah, that dude. Bazooka, like I, I, for the longest, maybe a first couple weekends, I was just scaring with that horn, and like I didn't even need to slide, which was nice, you know. Yeah. Like you got to save it, your knees it, a little bit. <laughs> it did. It really did. It saved my knees, and then like once, you know, maybe an hour before showtime, I would warm just up get my warm ups yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Put the gun away. Get a little warm up in, and then go for the. And that's good thing about your character too, is you can run with the 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 uh, bazooka all night and freaking boom like like you said the last hour before the show get out there slide a little bit get a little warmed up and then by the time show comes around you're ready to go you know you're still you're you're pretty much fresh with sliding yeah so yeah that's a lot of fun man i mean it goes without saying we had a we had a lot of funny moments this season man and and this is the part of the podcast that i love the most is when we get to talk about some of those funny moments uh a lot of interactions I've had with you, a lot of interactions you probably had with other guests. Uh, off the top of my head, some of the ones that I love personally seeing you do was uh, the tip off is obviously one of them. That was <laughs> that was just hilarious when you guys were just you and you and Blue Clown were just going back and forth with the ball. And this kid was trying to get it. You could tell he was getting frustrated. And you're like, oh, this is too fun. We're going to keep going. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like, why are you bouncing a basketball in our scare zone? Like, like I you that's... know it's bound to happen. Come it's on, gonna man. happen but it's like all right and then my favorite thing to do like i hope this doesn't get out too far but um i'd be like hey hey yo pass the rock pass the rock and then they pass it and i just stand still and the ball passes over my shoulder <laughs> like, i don't even reach for it like oh oh that was for me that was for me <laughs> <laughs> the kid has to go run and chase it like <laughs> the fun part about being a monster too and i noticed it is you can get people to pretty much do whatever you want and, like, I've heard stories of fucking monsters having 
people buy them churros, buy them beers. <laughs> like, I have heard some of the most outrageous stories, and I'm just like, are really are people really like that gullible? Like, are they gonna just give up like that? Like, come on, like. <laughs> I seen that. I'd be like, "How about I buy one and then me and you eat it together?" Like in that scene from Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> I mean, unless oh, you know. I mean, I'm talking Chiro, You know, I mean, you get one end. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's not saying no. So I didn't you know, say no. It's on the table potentially for next year. We'll see. We'll see. What's up? Uh, but I mean, listen, dude. Like the fucking bazooka is hilarious i mean i saw so many people get scared off of that alone that's just funny to watch um what I, oh i one of my favorite things is when uh we were doing some penalty brothers footage and you came in for something and someone asked you for a picture and you're like all right first i gotta give you this and then you did the fucking circle below the waist <laughs> and i was dying hysterically when i saw that i'm like oh god dude he got us he got us all it's done it, you just it's funny to see you just have fun with it you know what i mean that's what gives me the best experience especially when i go into a clown zone and you can just have fun with it that is the best experience for me as a, as a guest and i can honestly say that with pride because it is it really makes it a, a, a fun time it's it's a blast like you, i mean obviously we're there to do a job we're there to scare but like I said, if you can't scare anybody, like you got to entertain them. Yeah. Like that's what they're there for. They're paying to get entertained. And, you know, if I could leave you with something, something funny, something scary, like I did my job. Oh, you, you beyond did your job this year, man. This was, <laughs> it was so fun to watch you guys this season. And I, I absolutely had a freaking blast. Another one I love too is, uh, just like I said, every time he'd see me, the first thing that came to mind is you're not that guy, pal. And you're uh, not that guy, pal. That, that was like literally our... <laughs> <laughs> that was our hellos to each other. Like we didn't, we didn't have a standard. Oh, hey, what's up? It was, hey, you're not that guy, pal. Trust me. And it would go on for like a lot, like for most of Dude, the night. Dude, the whole night. <laughs> yeah, like every time we saw each other. Like I have one on footage where uh, I, I told him that I told you that, and you were like dressed like that, looking like that. You're not that guy, pal. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going for the Wolfman. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't see it, and then you just walk away. <laughs> I was just dying hysterically, dude. I was like, this guy is fucking hilarious, man. Like, I, it's I, it's so off the top of my head. Like, it's all improv. Like, that's yeah. like, I mean, it's so fun because, like, you're a clown. Like, okay, yeah, you can be funny, but you're also scary. Like, you can use both to your advantage. Oh, like, yeah. I don't, sometimes I don't even know what comes out of my mouth. And I'm like, did I just say that? I'm that's pretty funny, but I don't think I should have said that. <laughs> I, I have to ask you, dude, because the one I love the most, obviously, is you taking the picture of other people uh, when they ask you for pictures. How many times did you actually do that this season? Like, was oh. that a one and done, or did you do that many times? Oh, I do that all the time. Like, I th I, th I place the stupid card, like, hey, can I get a picture? Yeah, here you go. Flash on or flash off. Oh, that's a perfect one. Here you go. Here's your phone back. Uh, or, it, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday. Can I get a picture? Like, Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> oh man. I, I think it's funny. Like, I don't know. Like I little thing, like, like I said, it's all improv. Like I think my, one of my favorite things to go to is like when people pull out a, like for a selfie. Yeah. And it's an Android. I'm like, what in the Android quality? Like, don't tag me. <laughs> do me a favor. Do not tag me in this because it's gonna look bad. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, I remember. I remember I got somebody with that. Like, I had this dad and his and this wife. Uh, this guy and his and his wife. He pulled out his phone and, and it was an Android. And I was like, what in the Android quality? And he looked at me like, so, oh, that's what my wife just said. <laughs> no, I just said I need to get an, an iPhone. I was like, bro, she's right. <laughs> I was like, hurry up, take the picture. I, I, I don't got time for this. Uh, it's, I mean, dude, it's funny to hear that. Hey, bro, but I got a, I got an Android. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> but I got the good quality shit, you know. Uh, like, I, I, pay, I would hope so. I pay for the expensive stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I want that, that new Galaxy, not that like. That knockoff Galaxy you get it. That fucking, iPhone wannabe uh, Android. Talk about the, 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 the Android that you get at the fucking uh, Metro PCS. <laughs> you know? That's my... That, <laughs> literally, that's what I say. It's like, what in the Android quality? What in the Metro PCS am I looking at? What in the Cricket Wireless? If you could get away with it, it would have been funny. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, fuck. That was hilarious. I choked up on that. <laughs> It's good. I mean, I mean, like if you can get away with it, and I know you guys are like limited to what you say, but like I would love it if one night you just went, "What in the metro piece of shit is that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh, I man. didn't think about that. That's hilarious right there. That's, that's like, funny. What in the metro piece of shit is that? Like, that would have, <laughs> I mean, I know you could probably get in trouble for that, but, you know, I'm a bad influence. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Come on, PG-13. It's a PG-13 event. Uh, I mean, shit is PG-13. Let's, <laughs> let's be real. I mean. Depends how many times you say it, though. Yeah, I mean, just maybe once a night and just save it for the one. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know it's going to be the funniest, but. um. <laughs> No, I mean, and then you were, I mean, I remember the night we did the Penalty Brothers, and oh my god, I, and you got involved with that a little bit too, that was hilarious. I mean, I don't know what came through my mind that night, I was like, I'm gonna buy penalty flags, let me see what I can do with these guys, and let's <laughs> see what we can create together, and I owe it all to them, that was, I just bought the damn flags, the, the rest of this on them, like, I had no, I, I was probably like 5% of that plan, they were the 95% that, <laughs> like, I, and that's crediting too much for 5%, you know what I mean, like. But, oh, my God, that was some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. But, I mean, it was just a fun time, man. I, I I can truly say that I will be attending this event every year, and I will be attending this event multiple times a year. I don't have to care if I have to drive all the way from fucking Norwalk to all the way to Valencia. Like, I'm going to do it, man, like, because I love yeah. the event. It's a lot of fun. It's just it's a great environment to be in. It just seems healthy and whatnot, and it's a lot of fun. Like, I, yeah. I honestly said I would go scare there if I it's could. It's funny – like I'll, I, for the longest time, I it's, you know, we had that stigma. It's like, you know, Knott's was kind of like the left out child of all haunts, you know? Right. And I think one of the comments that I've seen that would like hit it spot on, I thought it was the funniest thing I had ever seen, but somebody commented on like a Fright Fest uh, video on YouTube and it said, Fright Fest is the Florida of Southern California haunts. And I was like, that is spot on. Yep. That is so funny. <laughs> yep. I laughed so hard at that comment. Oh, man. That's it's like one so of my true. favorite comments. Oh, but man. We, we, we are so out of left field. Like, we, I'm, I, I will give us this. Like, we, we put on, we, our actors, we put on, we put our hearts on our sleeve. And like, it, it shows. Like, we, we give it our all. And, you know, our makeup is good. Oh. Our, our talent is good. Oh, don't even get me started with the makeup, dude. The makeup. I think if any haunt's known for you know their makeup, it's gonna be Fright Fest because you got some talented artists out there. Especially, I know mid season two, you guys had to do the uh, the mask mandate and whatnot. Yeah. But God damn, dude! It, it didn't even look like you guys were wearing a mask out there. Like the makeup was so good on that, it just looked like it blended right in with your face. And they 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 killed it. They honestly did an awesome job for what you know what was implemented those those policies that were implemented they they pulled it together and they they to a t they they brought our characters to life like yeah. what, what we needed to look like because i remember looking at it from afar i'm like holy shit are they wearing masks i don't think they're wearing masks and then i seen it up close and, and you have to be like mind you, you have to be pretty close to like really notice it because then you'll start noticing like these but still even up close looks fantastic it's so funny because some some of the higher ups too backstage, um, they even got mad at Pink. They're like, "Hey, you need to put your mask on." They're like, "It is a mask," and they're like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, look." And then he took it off, and he's they're like, "Oh man, that looks really good." And we're like, yeah. "Yeah, you know, we're not gonna not follow the rules." Yeah, you're like, I want to keep, I want to keep my job. I like what I do. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna abide by the rules, man. I want to keep scaring, like. No, that's that's hilarious, man. But you shout out to you guys' makeup team. They do a phenomenal job uh, there, and and just not only your zone, but like every zone that I saw, every maze that I went in, like it was it was some quality stuff right there. And I really uh, hats off to them. They they I think if any, like I said, if any haunts known for anything, Fright Fest is gonna be known for their makeup team and their and their monsters, because hands down, I mean, and there's so much more to it. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg right there. They're they're no, they got such a great behind the scenes team overall from what I, what I walked through, what I saw, you know, from building mazes, sound design, lighting, everything. Like I, I've always said to, uh, you know, going to six flags, it felt for me more like a party there than it did an actual haunt because they got the live <laughs> entertainment and, you know, you got the mazes and you got all the scare zones that are just having a good time. Like I remember us, me and Rob coming out of one of the mazes there, they, they had the band up there. And they were playing the one of the Blink One Eighty Two songs, and out of nowhere, I just I looked at Rob and I just yelled, "Where are you?" and just walked away because <laughs> that was the song they were playing, and we were just dying, dude. But I mean, me and Rob would sit there for hours and just laugh our asses off, dude. And not to mention Rob doing his photography thing this year, he got really good with that. I mean, so shout out to Rob for that. But 
I mean, it, it was just a fun time, dude. I, and I can't wait to go back next season. I'm already thinking of ideas of uh, how we can create some good stuff together next season, man. Fright Fright Fest is a party. You you you're right on that. Like that, I'm I'm glad you guys are you know excited about coming back because I mean that we we just have fun and we hope that other people have fun too. Like that's that's my main goal. It's like I'm just doing me, and I hope people appreciate it. And you know, I'm if you don't, cool. If if you do, cool. Yeah, come back, man. <laughs> Come see us again. We'll we'll all be here, man. Now that's a lot of fun, man. I, I I really appreciate and enjoy everything that you guys do over there, and just continue doing it, man. I mean, don't let don't let the haters bring you down. Just do. Oh you no, have never. A great time. <laughs> um, man, I gotta I gotta tell you, man. It's been great talking to you. It's been great knowing you as even more as a person, man. You you really are uh, the green clown, and you are two different people, man. And, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of similarities, but at the same time, the Green Clown and you are two different people at the same, you know what I mean? But that's always good to separate the character from the from the person, you know what I mean? Like, the character's one thing, and the person's a whole different person, so. And you would never Ooh. expect that from seeing, getting the first impression <laughs> off a character, you know what I mean? Especially Green Clown. <laughs> I appreciate that. That, that, that. that means a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I truly do enjoy everything you guys do, and you could see it. You'll, you bet your sweet ass you'll see us there next year, probably multiple nights, more than three. I'm, I'm aiming for five next year. Maybe maybe if I'm lucky enough and I don't push it too much, maybe ten. We'll see. Hell, hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I might just buy a season pass and just show up. You know what I mean? I, I only bought a season pass because of the Green Clown, so, I mean, uh, you might as well, too. The Green Clown? I mean, sometimes I hear he's not that guy, though. Oh, he is that guy. Oh, like, I that heard guy? that... I heard that he doesn't do push-ups. Uh, he pushes the world down. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, yeah. I, I heard one time, uh, you know, a green clown got bit by a snake, and three days later, after a lot of pain and agony, the snake died. Yeah, that, that's what I heard, too. I heard, I heard that. that the green clown actually has a bear rug, but it's not dead. It's just afraid to move. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I know the bear clown was or a bear clown. I didn't know the green clown was related to Chuck Norris, man. Like, yeah, what, what? I heard that uh, Chuck Norris turns into the green clown oh, when he's man. mad. Yeah, that makes sense. Instead of the Hulk, he turns into the green clown, and the freaking Hulk's scared of him. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you, man. I, I I swear, man, and it's great to to know you as a person, and to and it's great to just have you as a friend, man. I mean that that that's what means the most the world to me right there is to get to know these people as people and uh, develop the friendship that, you know, you can't ever replace or anything. Cause you're you, I'm me and you can't, there's no replacing that man. You're, it's one of a kind. And, uh, well, unless, unless you say you look like Sean Penn, but uh, <laughs> I don't know Sean Penn from, uh, what Fast was times it? At Ridgemont high, man, <laughs> look up the picture and then put it next to your screen next to him. <laughs> Tell me he, it wouldn't be a great Halloween costume next year for him. What's, what's the face? How's the face? What's the face? <laughs> it's got to look like you're stoned out of your mind and have some checkered vans and you're good to go and you got to talk with the surfer dude, you know what I mean? Or, <laughs> you're, you're good to go. I'm telling you, if you pop up with a fucking blonde wig instead of your green hair, I would laugh my ass off. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it just for you. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna buy a wig and just one night when you're there, I'm just like, hey, this is for you. This is for you. Hey, what's hey, up, dude? What's up, dude? I would laugh my ass. Like, oh. There it is. He's already got the checker bag. There you go, man. That's his new. There's his new haunch. You just gonna put a little, put a little, uh, some, you know, some metal on there, and you're good to go. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Uh, uh, before I let you go, one last question I always ask all my guests. Um. First off, I gotta ask. Uh, outside of haunt, are you actual? Are you a horror movie fan? Yo, oh, yeah, I love horror movies. Love them. Um, some of them, like nowadays, they're just kind of cheesy. Um, right. But I think I- I'm gonna say this: like my favorite so far in a long time has been like the Conjuring series. Nice. Uh, I think the very the con- the first Conjuring um, that one scared me. So I think. Anything that has to do with possession, they they did they did they executed um that movie like perfect. Yeah. And it, it, it scared me. It did. I uh, I'm not gonna lie. How you feel about um, the exorcist? I uh, I watched that movie when I was a kid. I didn't I couldn't sleep for three days. And it was crazy too when HHN had that as a maze the very first year. It was almost like I was facing my fear. Yeah. When I was a kid. Was and it, it 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 
I'm that I'm terrified. I was terrified of that movie and I could not, I had nightmares. I could not sleep. I was scared to go to sleep right. uh, and, and to cut, like face my fear on uh, like going through that. Like it kind of like was like, all right, I did it. Like you lived it's it not in person sp- now. Yeah. So it was like, it was kind of neat to like face my fear, but it's funny. Cause like, I'm so afraid of like demonic things that when I came back to Fright Fest in 2016, I was a demon in Demon's Door. Right. So it was almost like. The table. Was, how, how the turntables. Turntables. Chicka, chicka. <laughs> Got to blaze. No, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it, it kind of like was like, I'm going to be what scares me. So and I brought it to life, you know, like that was kind of neat to like. I don't know, like not it is in a way like facing my fears, but I got to become my fear. Yeah. So well, I'm not I'm not I mean, yeah, that stuff kind of scares me, but I'm not as afraid of it as I used to be. The Conjuring is a good selection, though, man. I love the Conjuring, especially love the Conjuring, too. Um, Conjuring, the devil made me do it was a really like interesting one for me too, just to kind of think of the more reality of things like that actually happening and stuff, which is really interesting in my opinion. Um, but yeah. Good choice, man. Conjuring. Um, before we sign off, man, uh, where can they find you on on Instagram, social media, man? Where where can they follow freaking Mister Blaze the Clown, man? <laughs> My Instagram is dat dude blaze. That's d a t d u d e b l a z e. Dad do blaze yep. uh, at Instagram. You can uh, click the link on my bio. I got, I got merch. I got uh, my podcast. Um, I haven't really done the YouTube thing yet. So I'm, I'm still working on that. Um, but yeah, you just find me there. And if you have any questions, anything, I don't know. I'm, I'm always up to talk, you know? Yeah, man, this guy, I mean, me and him talked a lot over season and stuff. So it was a good time. Good time, man. Good time. I, <laughs> Thanks, man. I, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and, and chat with us and, and give us a little bit more insight on Green Clown because uh, ge- definitely a character that I is one of my favorites at Six Flags. And I look <laughs> it's forward. one of my favorites. It's one of your favorites. See, you're his number one fan, man. Yeah, that's what that's like I said, like that's why I got the season pass to see the Green Clown. I'll take a close number two. I'll be a number two fan. Like, <laughs> No one could be a bigger fan than you, but I'm no, like, no, no, no. I'm like up there. I'm like, with other than you, I'm up there. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty good. Uh, and there's a lot of fans of the Green Clown out there. A lot of fans of all the clowns out there. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, but with all that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, hit that like button and uh, leave some comments for Blaze. Let him know. Show him the love. Um, in the words of Doctor Disrespect, give him the love tonight, man. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, Green Clown. Yeah, Green Clown. Let's get a hashtag. Yeah, Green Clown in the comment section, man. I'd love to see that. <laughs> Uh, and when you guys, if you guys share any of this on Instagram and you guys tag uh, myself or Blaze, you know, tag hashtag, uh, yeah, Green Clown. We want to see. Yeah, it all. Green Clown. There will be even a hashtag when I post about this video on Instagram. You probably already saw it. That's why you're at this video right now. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, if, if you guys want to keep up to date to what we're doing, follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Four and on Twitter at Knights of Four. Make sure to hit the subscribe button with that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a video, my voice just cracked right there. Ah. Going through puberty all over again, Blaze. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Uh, but with all that, I know I'm going to get a lot of fucking comments on that one alone, too. <laughs> I already know a couple people that are going to be making fun of me over that and stuff. So, uh, anyway, with all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. And we will see you guys next time right here on the Mindless Horror Podcast for another episode. See you guys real soon. I love this show. You're moving into a dimension of